today. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Katrina and this is my channel Create Something Pretty. Today's video is going to be of all my makes from April and May. Um, I was sort of a bit swept up in the So Autumn Denim Challenge for those few months so I didn't really make as many things as I'd hoped. So um, I thought I'd do a roundup of those two months um, in this video today. So it's my um, April and May sewing makes. So what did I make? <laughs> um, before I get into that, what am I wearing first? It's always important. Um, this is a top, this is the t-shirt that I normally, I wear this so much, I really like it. It's probably one of my favorite t-shirts. Uh, it's just in a cotton jersey, it's pattern to make it. Uh, this is a New Look 6449, and I made this version here, and it has a little pocket there. And I just cut it off, <laughs> made it shorter into a t-shirt. I think I actually saw quite some time ago, I made this a few years back, uh, someone else did a hack with this t-shirt or with the dress pattern and I pretty much did the same thing that they did so uh, it's just, I love it, it's the best one. Another one of these, I actually am quite surprised I haven't yet <laughs> made another one of these t-shirts so yeah it's a really nice one. I have the little pocket here, I think the details just make such a difference. Um, I've got these are got little cuffs. These are actually supposed to be turned up, but it, I didn't sew it on very well and it keeps coming down, so I don't mind. It's it's nice and warm and it's quite comfortable. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing today on this very grey, drizzly. Well, it's not really drizzly. It's just grey. <laughs> just not a lovely day at all. It's a good day to be at home and doing lots of sewing if you are so lucky to be able to do that. So um, yeah, so that's what I'm wearing today. Um, now I made. I've got seven items to show you. Uh, two are half finished, and you have seen them before. I'm very sorry about that. Um, they're as part of the So Autumn Denim Challenge. Um, I have one item that is not uh, a clothing item for myself, and one item you oh. definitely haven't seen, and the others are all sort of shirts, tops, that sort of thing. So let's get going <laughs> so I'll just start off with the ones that I haven't probably finished and I have spoken about these before this is the Jollet skirt that I made for my daughter um, this is from Little Lizard King and I have made this twice before I made one as a present for my niece when she was a teeny tiny baby that was the cutest skirt ever and I made another little skirt for my daughter but I think I was a bit young for her <laughs> it just wasn't her style uh, I didn't even really like it on her. I just, yeah, I didn't like it. So I wanted to make it something a little bit more grown up. So just a plain denim sort of style skirt. She loves to wear skirts over her leggings. And uh, this is, you can tell it's not finished because it doesn't have buttons on it. And I have actually sewn the placket shut. So uh, I had a little issue with this. Um, it doesn't fit. <laughs> She doesn't, she can't even get up over her legs, it's way too small. Uh, it is supposed to have elastic in the back here and I didn't end up putting that in because that's the kind of the point I got to when I found out it didn't fit. Uh, so I did have a viewer um, had a suggestion which I think is a really good idea. To maybe undo the placket and see if it actually fits around her hips rather than trying to get it over her hips. So I might try that first before I do anything I'm just else. using the scraps left over from the So Autumn Denim Challenge. These are nice, um, I'd say sort of lightweight sort of denim. And I love this contrasting piece at the back. I did not realise I would like that as much as what I do. I would like to have put that somewhere else on the front maybe, like having a one panel, one colour, one another, I don't know, something on the hem maybe. I'm not sure. I just really like that contrast of colour. I yes, quite surprised how much I like it. So yeah, that's what I made for my daughter. That is the Jollet skirt by Little Lizard King. And yes, thank you so much for your suggestions on how to go about trying to get it to fit her. Um, I really appreciate your comments on that one. And yeah, I do intend to go through and see if I can make that work. So yeah, that is the the first item. Now this next item is my next unfinished item, and I'm not sure that I am going to go back and finish these. I don't know. So this is the item that I was making for the So Autumn Denim Challenge. And this is the Ash Jeans from Megan Nelson. So, oh, they're a bit wrinkled. I actually didn't realise all that wrinkled. I ironed everything else. Um, yeah, so they... The, one of the first things they say is to not top stitch. <laughs> and I wanted to trial it to see how it would go because I hadn't done it on jeans before. So I thought I'll just give it a go and do it anyway. And... Um, 
I don't know if that was on Megan Nelson's patterns when I said not to do that. It might have been lifting pins and needle where she said, do not top stitch the item because you'll hate yourself. She was right. <laughs> she was so right. Um, so I had some fit issues. This is supposed to be my first trial of the pattern. Uh, if you top stitch, it makes it very difficult to take seams in. So I definitely shouldn't have done that. I had a problem with the one, the fabric was not comfortable because this is supposed to be the stretch option, uh, like the skinny jeans from Megan Nelson, the Megan Nelson Ash jeans. And this part here, which you can see, I've sort of just done a little um, basting stitch at the crotch. The crotch, I think, was too long and the back was too baggy and the fabric was uncomfortable tight. And every time I pulled it in to try and make it look like a slim fit jean, it just created a whole other fit issues. So I was really stumped <laughs> and it was a really hard thing to do when I was documenting what I was doing along the way. I think I just needed to take my time and not have a deadline because I have never made jeans before. I have never really even made pants before. I've made them for my kids, um, like track pants, that sort of thing. I have never made anything in the way of pants before. So this was probably a bit of a jump, <laughs> like a going in the deep end uh, sort of project for me. I have done I have done the whole zip fly, I have done that. I have done belt loops before, I have done all that in the pockets. I've done all of this before. It's just fitting them. That was my issue. But these are a shorts version. You can see there's <laughs> no legs on that. <laughs> One day I will finish it. I'm sure I will just get around to undoing this and seeing if I can make it fit a little bit better. But as it is, it's not a great fit. Um, I haven't got these on Instagram yet because I haven't had suitable weather <laughs> to be able to take some photos. So, yeah, that is uh, my next make. This is the Ash Jeans by Megan Nelson. And you can see also I don't have a... Um, I pressed that on there yet so I might have to get around and doing that at least and yeah this um, denim was from uh, this was a stretch denim from Spotlight um, I think maybe if I have another go at making jeans I might make um, a different style of jeans I just feel like this fabric and the pattern weren't a good match and um, like the pattern was pretty good it was I didn't find it too hard to follow along at all um, I'm sure there was a few bits that I got a bit stuck on but I can't think of them to the top of my head now once I put this on the um, my Instagram page I usually put on there any alterations and things on there that I can think of so I put that in there in quite detail more so to remind myself the next time I make it so if hopefully that can help you guys as well if you want to check that out on my Instagram page which is under the same name create something pretty so yeah that's my ash jeans by Mel Megan Nelson the next item I made was a dog jacket <laughs> This is my dog jacket by Closet Core, and it has actually just gone through the wash. It's a little bit wet at the moment, um, and it's also covered in dog hair. Oh my goodness, I cannot seem to get rid of dog hair lately. I've never had this problem, but then again, I've never had an indoor dog before. Uh, this was using just some scraps of denim that I had left over from another project. Um, I, I used a scrap of... Um, plush material for the inside, um, what do you call it, it's fleece or polar fleece, just cheap polar fleece from Spotlight. I also use this for my daughter's um, glaze blanket by DIY, DIBY Club um, and I have, I quilted it, there's some quilting, cotton quilting inside, you see I've quilted it, that was really fun to quilt, I really enjoyed doing that, much more than what I expected to. Uh, my dog's a bit of an odd shape. He's kind of, um, he's long and long and little, I guess. <laughs> so I've had to bring the, um, this is uh, the Velcro. I had to bring that up a bit. I had to bring in, this has got a lot of hair on that there, I just realised. Um, I had to bring up the bit that goes under his belly. I had to bring that up a bit. And this is on the Closet Core website. So it's not an actual pattern that you could print off and follow step by step. You need to go through it on the web, uh, the blog on the Closet Core website. Um, I don't have a proper computer. I'm doing it off my phone. So I found it a bit hard to, particularly for this part, I found that really quite hard to understand what they wanted me to do. I wasn't quite sure where to attach it. And so I've just sort of put it with my binding and the top bit. I've got a feeling it might be 
should be going on the bottom bit and there's supposed to be a hole in here where you can attach a lead onto the collar but it's still how i've done it still works um and this part goes up the sides it's all kind of a bit wrinkled at the moment because it's still a bit wet uh, so this just attaches up on the sides and i have actually had to shorten these a bit so i'll make sure i put some photos in for all of these things that i've made and i've just used a binding that i had um, all these items were just leftovers or things i already had in my stash including the uh the velcro tape i just had quite a bit of that so yeah I've, the binding I butchered <laughs> it is absolutely a horrendous job um, putting that on I yeah I normally you make my own binding so I can always make it that a little bit wider because I know I'm not very good at putting it on I do need that little bit of extra width and yeah this one I have done rows and rows and rows of stitching just to make sure it doesn't come off so it's not a great job and yeah I hope you can't see too much of that hair because I can see loads and it looks terrible so that is the closet core dog coat which is on the closet core blog so that and i think you just google it and it'll come up and it'll take you to the blog so that's how i found it so yeah that's the third thing that i made for uh april may so that's all of the things i didn't finish and that things that aren't for humans so let's go on to things a little bit more fun i do have one more denim item which i'll show you that now because i'll get them out of the way <laughs> and then i can show you the things that are a little bit more fun so this one you haven't seen, I'll just take the, the coat hanger off. This is uh, my denim shirt that I made for the Soul Autumn Denim Challenge. Um, this is the All In Easy Fit shirt by Patton Emporium. And it has the two pockets on the front. I have buttons all the way down. These buttons holes were just a pleasure to put in uh, because I'm so used to working with rayons and slippery fabrics. Uh, these gave me no trouble. <laughs> I did them one after the other. I have no, never done buttons so quickly. Um, I have put my buttons on by hand. I did do those a little bit fast. And I do find I might need to go back and move, move them around a bit. They're a bit, um, the plackets don't really meet up <laughs> that well at the end. I need to sort of move that a little bit to make it a bit more even at the bottom. <laughs> and I made the version with the collar stand. Uh, I'm really glad I did that. I think that does suit me better to have a collar stand. And I did the sleeves. These are just, uh, it doesn't have the cuff at the bottom. It's just the ones that you fold up because I'm just going to wear it like that. I sort of wear it more like a jacket sort of style thing over our other clothing. And what else? I have, I did the box plate at the, I think it's called a box plate at the back. And um, what else? I have got the made in the suburbs. Um, I can't think who does them. <laughs> I'll put her name on the screen because I can't think of her name right now. So um, that that is my All In Easy Fit shirt by Patton Emporium. I am very happy with it. Um, I'm a little bit over making shirts now. <laughs> I've made a few of them lately. Um, yeah, and oh, I did. I added an inch length to the front and back, and I moved my pockets down an inch as well because I felt like it just needed it to make it look a little bit more of a casual style shirt. So yeah, I'm quite quite glad I did that. I think it worked quite well. So. I'll make sure I put photos in of me wearing that. And yeah, that's that's the first clothing item that I have to show you. <laughs> so now let's the next ones. They're all a little bit more fun. Um, I'm pretty sure the next one I have spoken about. Um, this one is the Anna Allen Anthea blouse. And I did the neckline hack. Um, it still has the same sleeves that the original pattern has. Um, it's you just follow the instructions on the blog and it shows you how to do a scoop neckline um, the only thing with this on me the scoop was quite low <laughs> and I didn't realize um, when I was reading the blog I think I really need to read through things properly before I go through and doing them stop rushing so much um, yeah it's because the shirt isn't actually designed to have a scoop neck it does tend to, um, it doesn't really sit as well as what it should. So they have you put this little ruffle on here to try and disguise that. And I found on me it was, it's quite big. It's still quite big now. I kind of think I might have to go in and try and dummy it up a bit more because it's still a bit wide and it falls off my shoulders. Um, 
I just noticed I haven't put a label in it. <laughs> I might have to do that. Um, I think the buttons, I'm not sure if they're from my stash. I can't remember. But this fabric was from East Coast Fabrics, and it's just a very slinky sort of rayon that I really quite like. Um, and it's definitely my colour. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I think if I did this again, I don't think I'd do the scoop. I think I'd stick to the original neckline. Uh, it was, yeah, it's just a bit of messing around and it's not really that comfortable on me. So, um, yeah, I might try and fix it because I do really like it. I like, I do love the Anna Ellen Anthea. I think I might, I actually keep thinking about making another one because <laughs> I really like it so much and I just want to have a nice plain sort of colour that I'll wear um, just more easily with clothing. I don't have to try and match so much. So, yeah, I really do like this one. It's a really nice shirt and it's nice and light and, yeah, so it's that. Um, Anthea Blouse by Anna Allen with the neckline scoop. <laughs> so we're down to two items. Oh, I'm barreling through these. Um, I'll show you this one. This is the one that uh, no one has seen yet. And it's pretty much because I think it's a little bit boring. <laughs> and I'm not really, I'm not 100% happy with it, but it's very comfortable. So uh, I would like it to be a bit nicer than what it is. So this is a t-shirt that I made um, in April, I think. I just really, I still do need more t-shirts. Um, I'm actually working on one right now. Uh, this is, I think it's a plantain. I might have to go through and double check because I really can't remember what I made. And I don't have it documented down it anywhere, but I'm pretty sure it would have been the plantain shirt. And I think... I upsized and I think it might be too much of an upsize so it's a little big on me but it's also really comfortable and it's using a recycled cotton that I picked up at Spotlight a long time ago I got it really really cheaply but it has been the most comfortable fabric I, I do not regret it one bit this is the third garment that I've made out of that same fabric uh, I used my cover stitch to put in the neckline um, it isn't the best job I've ever done um it's a bit wrinkly but it does look all right on it's really nice and soft I've got to say I've done a nice sort of deep hem on the cuffs and on the hem I have ironed this it still looks a bit wrinkly I've got to say um nice deep hems just to make it sit nice and flat um I feel like the reason I'm pretty sure the reason I don't like it is because I haven't gone back and added in all the shape I feel like it needs a that bit of shape because it is a bit oversized. But, um, yeah, I'm not the kind of person who would tuck it in. I kind of, depending where I'm going and what I'm doing, I would give it a slight tuck to give it a bit of style. But generally, I don't do anything fancy <laughs> where I need to do that. So I kind of need to make my shirts look good as they are. So, yeah, I might go back and do that still because it does still weigh on my mind that I haven't really made it look as nice as it could possibly look and I might need to do a little bit of work on that so yeah so that is a plantain shirt by uh, Deer and Doe it's a free pattern as well so it's uh all the ones I've made I've always liked them and I've always gone back to them so I made another one and I'm like I don't know this one isn't as good as the other one so I don't know I don't know what I've done wrong I might have to look into it a bit more maybe not go down a size I think that I might not go up a size I think I should have stayed at the size I had been wearing. So, yeah. So that's the plantain shirt by Deer and Doe, I think. <laughs> so let's get on to the last one. And I think the last one is probably my favourite thing that I made for the all those months. Though I do really like this shirt that I made um, from Pattern Emporium. This is the last one that I made. And this is a Roscoe blouse that is by True Bias. And I had been wanting to revisit this. I made it a few years ago in a sort of like a dirty red sort of colour that was had a very busy print. And I loved the shirt. I didn't love the busy print on it. And I just wanted another plain one. And I had this in my stash. It's a fairly lightweight rayon. I think, I think I got this from East Coast Fabrics. I'm not 100% sure. Um... Yeah, it would have been some time ago, so no idea if they still have it. They seem to go in and out of fabrics, well, according to their website, what I see on there. Um, but yeah, I um, I think the only alteration I would have made on this is to shorten the sleeves, because my other one was quite long. 
Um, I think I might have shortened the necktie because I was short on fabric or something. I qu can't quite remember. Um, and I think that's all the changes that I did to it. I don't really think I did anything else. I have got this one up on my Instagram as well as the Anna Allen is also on um, the Anthea Blouse. They are also on my Instagram as well if you want to go check those out. And so actually my All In Easy Fit shirt is also on there and I have listed any alterations that I've made to them um, under the descriptions um, in my Instagram page. <laughs> Hopefully that was clear. <laughs> didn't sound too clear to me oh, sorry about that so that is everything that i made for the month of uh, april and so may much for watching today i hope you enjoyed seeing those items i'm really sorry if you have already seen um maybe all of them i don't know but at least i'll be back on track to how i normally do my videos um if you did like it i'd love it if you give me a thumbs up uh if you're not yet subscribed i would love it if you would subscribe um, and also if you want to know when my videos comes out, if you hit the bell icon, that lets you know when there's a video up that you might want to watch. Um, and yeah, that's everything. So I hope you enjoyed seeing those today. Hopefully I'll see you again here next week. Um, and hopefully everything is all good and hopefully you guys get a lot of sewing time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you then. Bye.